AI threatens to destroy TikTok dancing videos. A single image with a driving video is all it takes, or at least that's what drove over 40 million views to this tweet. Do we still call them that? I'm not sure. Anyway, the first one here, not so much. If we scroll down a little bit, we'll see there. Rip TikTokers, 42 million. There's also a whole big tweet about the aftermath too, as people seemed very worried about it. I guess trying to run this one locally then. Mm, yes. One tiny problem is we don't yet have the code for that one. However, what we can run straight away is something very similar called Magic Animate. As you can see, this does look to be very similar to Animate Anyone, but as we all know, looks can be very deceiving, and one should never count their rodents before they've hatched. Oh, look at all the cute little rodent eggs. Anyway, let's have a look at this. Like you can see, it isn't perfect. Whoops, there is some glitching on the hand there, but, you know, we're sort of used to that with stable diffusion, I think, by now, aren't we? They've given us a whole bunch of other examples there. We can see the comparison between theirs and a whole variety of other things. And we've got another comparison there, all looking very good on theirs. Applications, unseen domain animation. So we've got the Mona Lisa running there and Girl with a Pearl Earring and Wonder Woman as well. So all sorts of things there. Multiple person animation as well. Excellent. And we've got the pipeline. Basically, you've got reference image in along with a dense pose sequence, uh, and then you get your dancing video out. Oh, all right. Now, being free and open source, there it is, BSD3 clause license. We can, of course, run this locally and have a look at all the stuff. First up, it's worth making sure you've got a decent computer or running anything locally. You'll need upwards of 12 gigs of VRAM, and I think ideally an NVIDIA card. Haven't got an AMD card to test it on, unfortunately. There are other ways to run it, though. You don't have to run it locally, so hold on for those if you're in that camp. All right, so for the Linux, the Penguins Among Us, this will give you the best support running locally, and it's the same operating system they use, so that's why everything will work really nicely. It's four commands in all, as of course, first of all, you will have to download that repository. Once you've downloaded it, you can just change directory, and then you're running these commands here. So conda env create minus f, environment.yaml and that will create exactly the same environment on your local PC as the developers have there. And then once it's done, just activate that environment. You'll likely already have Git and FFmpeg installed, but if you don't, a simple apt install Git FFmpeg will get those packages for you. If you don't have Anaconda, you can download that for free from their website. If you want to have a bit more of a challenge, then you could try to use Microsoft Windows. In that case, you'll definitely want to take a look at this Magic Animate for Windows version of the repository, which is very much the same thing. You still have to install Git and Python and FFmpeg, but they give you an install.ps1 script that will basically do everything for you. And talking of things which will do everything for you, as another option, the amazing Cocktail Peanut has a one-click installer for Pinocchio. And finally, for those without the necessary equipment, and I know that can be an issue, there is both a Colab notebook and a Hugging Face website as well. I know the Gradio interface doesn't look amazing thanks to my dark reader, but it is much the same as the one you'll get when we run it locally. As you can see, you've got lots of options to test this out for yourself, whether you've got a computer or not, but 
I always like to run things here. And if you're like me in this regard, you'll want to download the models too. Interestingly, two of them are just standard stable diffusion ones. They've got a 1.5 checkpoint there and VAE, although they do have a different set of models there in the Magic Animate repository. To quickly grab them all, you can run the commands on screen at the moment from within the Magic Animate directory. Basically, you're just making this directory structure here. So make their Magic Animate and pre-trained models and then downloading each of those links into there. Once you've got everything downloaded, it should look something like that. So there we've got Magic Animate and the Appearance Encoder, Dense Pose, Temporal Attention, and all these standard Stable Diffusion files as well. Editing the config file just like they suggest here is a great way to point to your downloads, which you may already have somewhere else as a Stable Diffusion user. So you could even try different checkpoints for fun file you're looking for is the one they say there, config prompts animation.yaml. So let's have a quick look at this file. There it is, that's my one pointing to everything locally. And also this file gives us a glimpse into what's going on. Alongside that standard stable diffusion file, we've also got a control net, that appearance encoder and a motion module. Does this sound sort of familiar in any way? Interesting. This is going to come in handy later on in the video. Can you guess where I'm going? Uh, you might already have seen the hint. Alrighty then, let's see this thing in action. As you can see, it's a fairly simple interface. Let's just pick one of these examples. There we go. So now you've got a reference image input. There's the motion sequence and those are the animation results. So rather than their reference, let's put our own one in and see what happens. As you can see in the background, it's chugging along there, roughly 10 and a half seconds for each iteration, meaning this is gonna take around four and a half minutes to generate. Now it's finally completed, and yes, around four and a half minutes. What does he look like? Let's have a look at the video, replay. Oh, oh yeah. Mm, yeah, get on down. Yeah, yeah, is, is definitely dancing. Obviously the wings are a bit weird, but then I like being mean to AIs. Okay, all right, let's pick another one here. We'll pick a slightly quicker sequence. We've got Mona Lisa running there, and instead of that, let's just drop a face in and see what happens. There he is. Oh, we've got some slightly interesting hands going on there, but let's have a look at the run. That's, that's not too bad. I mean, we've completely lost his beard, but all right, it's a guy running. How about if we try a non-square aspect ratio? All right, well, it's squished the reference image there, but how does the animation come out? Ah, okay, that does not look too bad, despite the squashed image input. There we go, yep, yeah, let's keep playing it. There she is running. All right, that's quite nice. Color me impressed. Right, I'm ready to do my own little dance. Uh, oh, hold on, uh, I can drop video there to upload the sequence, but how do I make a driving video like that with a purple background and everything segmented? Okay, well, one way would be to use video to dense pose. This is great as after you've installed it using the installation steps there, just another git clone and pip install requirements.txt along with a clone of the Detectron repository, you can just run a Gradio version there, python app.py. All right, let's run that one. This will give you another URL, crack the link open. You just have to drop your video there. Okay, I happen to have a video ready of a dancing Viking, so let's submit that and get the dense pose out. Okay, there we go, it's got a video. Let's have a quick look at that. And yeah, yeah, he's doing the little dance, doing the little dance. Okay, let's save this one off and give it a go. And there it is, drop video here or click to upload. Okay, let's click and we'll have that video there. So now we've got our own one and uh, let's try it with another picture as well. All right, ready to animate. Ready to see the painting dance? Um, yeah, there he goes. There he goes. He's really going for it. That did use a little bit more VRAM this time, all the way up to 15 gig for that six second clip. 
Some of the things I quite like about it is the fairly static background. It's like it's taken that character and in-painted a whole bunch of stuff and the clouds are all the same. So where he is, it's just imagined it. So I think that bit is really, really nice. Of course, the face is slightly mushy and so are the hands, but overall it's pretty good. Even that little hand onto the knee movement that I thought would be quite difficult for it to handle. You know what would be really handy though? Well, if you thought, can't I just do all of this in comfy UI? Then well done. The answer is uh, probably, probably. If you thought, can't I just do this in automatic 1111? However, the answer is, your search did not match any repositories. Okay, so I don't know. There might be a dense posting for automatic, but I can't find one. So I'm gonna do it in comfy. Yes, hello and welcome to more Nerdy Road into Geekery, where today I try my little paw at, well, basically copying that whole magic animate thing, but in comfy UI, because look, here we've got this node, Dense Pose Estimation. Doesn't it look wonderful? We've got a couple of models, R50, which I'm guessing is ResNet 50, ResNet 101, and a couple of color maps. Oh, magic Animate and Civit AI? Well, yes, because it turns out Civit AI does indeed have a control net for dense pose model that was released way back in August. It does use a slightly different color scheme though, as you can see, obviously there the background is black. Perfectly mimicking that original app in Comfy uh, did leave me with a few issues. Uh, while that dense pose control net does work, the temporal attention model and appearance encoder were another matter altogether. While it looks like they use something similar to animate diff, I couldn't load either of those modules, so I can't tell. Um, on top of that, this dense pose estimator does have a little bit of an issue, certainly while I'm making this video, um, in that it always outputs the same image, which isn't very good for videos. So my input video there is actually the same one I used before, that dense pose generated from video to dense pose. Once that node is working, of course, then you won't need video to dense pose at all, and you can just do all your dense posing in comfy. Those that guessed earlier where this was going and where it was going was, can I use that dense pose in Comfy UI as a control net, the answer is yes, you can. There it is, the Magic Animate Dense Pose is the one that I'm using to control this with that Dense Pose video. But how well does it work? I've just got a strength of one there, end percentage of one, so fairly standard settings for a control net. As an attempt at having an input image, I'm using IP adapter, IP adapter plus there now with a really low weight, quite a lot of noise and uh, well, ending quite early as uh, some problems with IP adapter is that it's, it's quite strong and will stop your images from animating. I'm also helping it along a little bit as well. A man in a gray suit and I'm trying to do a simple background. Okay, so what does that turn out like? There he is, there he is. That, that's not actually too bad. I've also got an interpolation node here as well, just to try and smooth things out if you think he looks any better there. Now, there's a little bit of strangeness going on with the pants, but I'm sure many of you are currently sitting there now wondering, well, what about the open, that other open pose model and those other control nets? I, I bet that would work. There are so many different things you could do to make this better and you'd be completely right. If you were doing that, then pat yourself on the back. All right, so a few minor little tweaks and adjustments here. I've added the, uh, the more recognizable open pose skeleton as a control net and also a bit of depth there with the Zoe depth map processor. Just to stabilize things even more, I'm actually throwing each video frame in through the IP adapter, as well as our standard animate diff settings there. The IP adapter in this case, I could actually turn up a little bit. So there I've got the weight all the way up at 0.85 and a fairly reasonable noise of 0.5. And then what do we get? There we go, look at him dancing. He's even got the, the little hand on the foot thing as well. If we, uh, if we scroll over to this one, have a look at the interpolated version, just to see it 
slightly smoothed out. Now, of course, he's got the cape from the original, and those horns are actually wings on the ears of his helmet. So it's sort of taken every single little detail from that original video, and uh, I think copied it quite nicely. So there you go. There we go. That's, that's the comfy UI way of doing Magic Animate. What's that? You, you want the workflow. You don't want to have to do all that by yourself. Well, as a special present for watching, I'll tell you now that you can grab it from the A Very Comfy Nerd website for free. Remember to check the troubleshooting tips at the top if you have any problems. Well, not with life in general, just with the comfy UI, you know. Anyway, time for a quick recap so we know where we are. Animate Anyone is coming out soon, but Magic Animate is here now and you can use it online or locally. Using their app is cool and stuff, but you may prefer Comfy UI for all the extra features, such as that frame interpolation and various different sizes beyond 512 by 512. Dense Pose is making a control net comeback, and there are many things that are going to get quite spicy in the new year. I can't wait to see what open source provides. Also, if you're interested in other cool, comfy UI workflows, I've got a whole bunch of them on my Patreon. And if you just want the free ones, then, well, maybe check out this next video.